Friends, welcome to our platform. Uh, today, I'll be looking at the letter that the president has written to the chief justice concerning the auctioning of properties belonging to the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council. Now, in this letter, the president is asking the chief justice to ensure that Muslim property is not auctioned, especially the, the mosque, the old Kampala mosque. Now, there is something that we need to understand about this later. First, the president is acting outside of his powers. That's our travails. He has overstepped his powers as the president because he has no right to ask the judiciary on how to dispense justice. This letter goes against Article 128 of our Constitution, the 1995 Constitution, as amended. This article provides for the independence of the judiciary. Clause 1 of this article provides that in the exercise of judicial power, the courts shall, not, shall be independent, and shall not be subject to the control or direction of any person or authority. Clause 2 of the same article says that no person or authority shall interfere with the courts or judicial officers in the exercise of their judicial functions. Therefore, for the president to come out and say that these courts you know, should be told on what uh, to do. And he even goes ahead and says, even if the law provides that you know, they should uh, dispense justice in a certain way, common sense should prevail. So the law should be put aside, and then we follow common sense. This is the president that swore to uphold to defend and protect the Constitution. He's going against the provisions of the same Constitution. But this is not surprising because we know him to be a constitutional delinquent. What is surprising is that people are surprised that something like this should come from the president. But what should be worrying us is that the judicial officers, especially the chief justice, who is supposed to stand up and defend the independence of the judiciary, as and when it is threatened, especially by the executive, this chief justice, Owinidolo, lacks the spine to do that. Why do I say this? On 27th of September, 2021, while officiating at uh, the fourth uh, Benedicto Chuanuka Memorial Lecture, the Chief Justice made statements to the effect that the President is the highest court of appeal. And this is what he said. Mr. President, you have the final say in certain court decisions. Many people don't know that the president is the last appellate court. Now, this goes against Article 132 of the Constitution which provides that the Supreme Court shall be the final court of appeal. The Chief Justice 
has now placed the highest court of appeal above the highest court of appeal. And this highest court of appeal is now the executive. So, we cannot expect the chief justice who believes that the president is the highest court of appeal to go against presidential directives to the judiciary. I am not discussing the merits or demerits of the court decisions concerning court pro uh, the property of the Muslims. I am looking at the executive's interference in judicial work. And this is where we now need to come in as citizens. Because when those whose duty it is to protect the Constitution abdicate their responsibility, then citizens must take their own matters in their hands. Today it is about a certain property. Tomorrow it will be something else. And what we choose to do will determine the premium we place on our constitution. Of what value do we, uh, you know, see our constitution to be? Of what value is the concept of separation of powers? If feeble protestations are all we can marshal, then it means that the Constitution is really just another uh, scrap of paper that is meaningless to the life of the country. So what we choose to do to these delinquents is what will affirm our conviction in constitutionalism and the rule of law. Just writing and ranting on social media is not going to defend our constitution and the independence of the judiciary. We expect the legal fraternity to come out and put their feet on the ground and draw a line in the sand and say that the executive must not interfere with the judicial arm of, of government. Let them not convince themselves that just writing papers and, you know, going to social media or appearing on radio and TV condemning is what will, will suffice. In Pakistan, when Pavez Musharraf sought to usurp the powers of the judicial arm of the state, the legal fraternity rose up and chased him out of power. Pavez Musharraf was a militarist. And the robbed members of the legal fraternity went out on the streets every day and forced him out. Can we see our own legal fraternity take you from their comrades in Pakistan and do something similar? If they don't, because this matter does not only concern uh, those in the legal uh, in the legal side who are engaged in uh, in the 
in law and uh, in the judicial sector, it concerns every citizen. Can we rise up and draw a line and say our constitution is going to be respected? If we don't do that, then we will be encouraging the despot to make more encroachments on people's rights to completely usurp the powers of different arms of government and undermining of state institutions. And the outcome will be that when he falls, the state will fall because there will be no pillar that will be left to hold the country together. The choice is ours. And we must remember that whatever choice we take, it has consequences. If we choose to do nothing, we must wait for the consequences of inaction. Thank you.